Welcome back to Best Behaviour, an initiative brought to you by ESG Clarity and B Corp to discuss better governance. During this series, ESG Clarity will be interviewing senior management of companies certified B Corp who issued a call to action to financial services to implement tighter and deeper corporate governance frameworks. This also fits in with Bomb Hill's campaign for better governance. So today I am joined by Founder and Chief Impact Officer of Tribe Capital, Amy Clark. Thanks so much for your time today, Amy. Thank you so much for inviting me, Natalie. Great. Well, I wanted to find out about what you're doing at Tribe um, as a certified B Corp company. So why did you issue this, why did this group of companies issue a call to action at COP26 in Glasgow last year? Well, I think partly to, to recognise, obviously, there's a huge amount of work underway at the moment, looking specifically at the climate crisis, um, you know, work on disclosure, work on um, uh, reporting regimes, work on risk management, so TCFD, SFDR, you know, the EU taxonomies, there's a huge amount of work underway at the moment, looking at how does the financial services sector specifically respond to this existential crisis that is um, our warming climate. Um, and that's needed. Um, and we are hugely supportive of the work that's underway. But one of the areas that we feel at the moment has not been getting enough coverage, especially as it relates to financial services, is this kind of thorny notion or thorny issue of corporate governance and what constitutes good corporate governance in what is fundamentally a very, very different world to the world that we inhabited, say, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. So the call to arms that we um, announced um, up in Glasgow in November last year was very much designed to bring corporate governance to the debate, to the table, um, using ourselves as examples of what happens when you fundamentally interrogate, you know, the core constitutional um, governance of your own business and give yourself the freedom to pursue purpose um, in all that you do, um, but also to ask financial service organizations, you know, our cousins, our brothers, our sisters out there, you know, trying to do what, what we all need now to do, to say, you know, come and talk to us, listen to us, learn from us. We're not perfect. None of the coalition members are perfect. We all still are desperately trying to become better at what it is that we do. But we have fundamentally shifted the uh, effectively the management and the process structures within our business to enable us to frink to think freely um, about how we pursue purpose, how we encourage and um, uh, permit our directors to make decisions that are based on stakeholders, not just shareholders. And that learning, you know, that journey that we've been on, we want to share with others so that we can embolden them and give them the confidence to want to interrogate it themselves. Absolutely. And yes, yes, as you mentioned, we're not perfect. This is a journey. But where are we today in that transition to a world that functions sustainably, balancing human prosperity and ecological boundaries? Yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 fair to say that we are right at the beginning of this massive transition that needs to happen. Um, you only need to look at the environmental science and the social science, you know, to look at the uh, significant uh, state of um, communities and ecosystems around the world um, to know that the journey ahead of us, you know, the runway that we have to now, you know, um, uh, embrace is is long. It's a, you know, and we're right at that at the start of that runway. We've made huge leaps over the last few decades in addressing, you know, key environmental issues and key social issues. But, you know, we have to be honest and not kid ourselves that we've, um, the, you know, we, we have tackled, you know, all of the issues that are out there and that we've even made in many ways sort of seismic progress. You know, the gap between what we need to do and what we've done so far is, is still huge. The IPCC reports, you know, obviously on the state of our climate are a great example of just how far we have to go, looking at what's happened with um, rising levels of inequality, economic inequality, another great example of, you know, how much further we have to go. It's actually, it's, it's um, I know it probably sounds really perverse to say this, but it's exciting knowing that you're at the beginning of this journey because it's a gift that has been offered to us, you know, and offered to the financial services industry to say, you know, you have such a seismic role in creating the future that we now need. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to interrogate everything and look at whether or not it's fit for purpose. So, Again, you know, I think coming back to you know what we were talking about, you know, earlier, 
there is a huge amount that is left to do, a huge amount that is left to do. None of us are saying that we've got all the answers. None of us are saying that we are perfect. Um, only through radical collaboration and in the spirit of radical collaboration, which is what the UN is asking us all to adopt, um, are we actually going to be able to walk and hopefully run further down that runway? Yes, absolutely. We're at the start of this journey, but there's also, like you said, a real opportunity to make an impact here. Um, so why is governance one of the leading catalysts for positive change and why is it important for everyone to work together to create system wide change? Well, you can almost think of it like a Hippocratic oath that doctors take. Um, you know, your your governance and your governance structure is effectively what guides your decision making. It guides the conversation at the board level. And as we know, conversations at the board level inform everything, um, absolutely everything. Um, you know, we have the OECD at the moment looking at their uh, principles of corporate governance. The EU are looking at what constitutes sustainable corporate governance. We've got uh, this big call to arms in the UK for uh, the Better Business Act, which is a rewrite of company law, Section 172, um, as well. Um, by creating the right operating code, you then have effectively a system that works efficiently and effectively. And this is corporate governance. Corporate governance is the operating code within every single business, within the system at large as well. And it was coded largely, not exclusively, but largely 51, 52 years ago when Friedman wrote his seminal essay. And that has infused and informed an awful lot of kind of the operating code that we now have, you know, within business and within the financial services system at large. The prevailing social, environmental and economic conditions when Friedman wrote his essay are completely different to the ones that prevail now. So the code needs to change. And that's why corporate governance is, it's not uh, a silver bullet as such, but it is a key that unlocks seismic change across many other issues, whether that's reporting, accountability, accounting, um, you know, all of the things that we're seeing happening out in the marketplace at the moment, all of these great initiatives like TCFD, corporate governance in many ways is the glue that binds it all together. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's why I'm so pleased that we are doing this campaign together and trying to reach as many people as possible. Thank you so much for your time, Amy. No, my pleasure. Thank you, Natalie.